I'm gonna be one of the cool guys to buy my merch. What's going on guys? Just some updates. I'd say breaking news, but I'm always late to the party. I don't know how these guys get the video out within like 10 minutes of when something happens. Uh, UFC 294 has had some big shakeups. I'm just looking through some of the fights now as well. Since since uh, did the last video, there's some other fights added. You know, a few updates, a few big changes. Obviously, I didn't mention last time, Nathaniel Wood is fighting Mohamed Naimov. Name of, I'm sorry if I butchered the name, but that's a great fight. And the fan has looked fantastic at featherweight since going up. So I'm excited for that. Mohamed Makayev, 10 and 0, great prospect. The guy's going to be, uh, I'm sure, running towards a title shot soon. He's been killing it at flyweight and uh, he's only getting better. He's taken on veteran Tim Elliott, but I think Makayev's got the tools to uh, to nullify his game. And uh, I think, I think, I think Makayev will get the win there. You know, he's a Great prospect, he's very, he's surging. Tim Elliott's at the other end of that, that spectrum and he's kind of, not in his way, I mean, he's, you know, he's at the other end. All the momentum is Makayev, he's been looking great. Onwards to the co-main event. Obviously everyone knows by now, because I'm fucking late to the party as always. Uh, Paolo Costa unfortunately got injured, he had elbow surgery and then tried to compete and then got staff in the surgery, I believe. I believe that's what happened. He got a staph infection by the looks of it in his, where he had surgery. One thing having surgery, but then getting a staph infection. I don't know if you've ever had a staph infection, it sucks and you don't want to be on the antibiotics and all that crap a week out, 10 days, whatever it is, from a fight. Not only having elbow surgery and then having a staph infection in where you had a surgery. So if that is what happened, I don't blame him. I mean, that's pretty, pretty rough. I see a lot of people calling him, calling him a bitch, but he obviously had surgery. His elbow was cut to pieces and like, it looks messed up. It's a shame because that was a really good fight. I think a big test for Hamza as well. I think Paolo posed a lot of problems, you know, his size, his strength, big brawler. He's got a lot more skills than people give him credit for. I did favor Hamza in that fight, but like, against Usman, you know, Usman's one of the greatest welterweights of all time. He has fought at middleweight before, but like, you know, I think he'll be overpowered by Hamzat. I don't think he'll be able to do his sort of typical game plan. You know, we out muscles guys, out wrestles them, drags them down. It's going to be a, a big ask, especially on 10 days, 12 days, whatever it is. But yeah, I mean, it's it's a live test. It's a legitimate test. I kind of feel for Hamzat because uh, I think a win here over Usman, people are going to still have a lot of questions because... You know, Usman, he's on a little skid, obviously lost to Leon a couple of times. His momentum has gone. You know, a lot, I know he has a lot of knee injuries and stuff like that, and people have said things or whatever. I don't know how hard he's been training since then. And, and again, with Hamza, it's all systems go. He's all, everyone's eager to see him compete against top guys. And ideally, you'd see him compete against top middleweights, because there's always going to be someone that says, if he wins this, oh yeah, but he's a well away at the end of the career, whatever. Usman is legitimate. If he goes out there and picks Usman up, dumps him, and submits him quick, you can't deny that. Hamza had an absolute war with Gilbert Burns, back and forth. He got dropped. He got, you know, Burns did fantastic, and uh, you know, Usman trains with Gilbert Burns, so I'm sure they have some insights or information. They know what to expect, how he feels, the strength, all those things. It's tough either way, if you're the guy on short notice, or if you're the guy taking the fight on short notice, you have to, you've done six, eight, ten, whatever weeks prepping for like a particular style, and then, uh, you know, last minute, oh, now you're fighting this guy, opposite style, that's different stuff, you yeah. know, so there is, there is something that sort of most fans don't account for when they, they watch fights, like, oh, the guy took on a week notice, blah, 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 yeah, but so did the guy that was prepping for someone else, and sometimes you come in, a week notice, 10 days notice, whatever. You haven't been beaten up through camp. You haven't been stressing for weeks about this fight. You haven't been, your body's fresh, basically. You come in fresh, you know. Maybe not the fittest, but you're not high mileage. You're not burnt out. You're not, you know, you're not fatigued and all that crap. So there is an advantage for Usman. If he comes in fresh, strong, confident, he hasn't got a big weight cut to world weight like he used to make. So 185, I'm sure he's gonna feel good. He's gonna feel strong. He's gonna feel full of energy. The real difference, I think, in this fight is is the grappling. Um, the wrestling, obviously, Usman is very high-level wrestling. But one thing Hamza has, he has the wrestling and jiu-jitsu. He has great wrestling and great submissions, which I, I, don't, I don't think Usman has great jiu-jitsu. He has great wrestling control. 
His control is fantastic in wrestling. His jiu-jitsu, you know, isn't like super high level. So in those wrestling scrambles where Hamza has that high level jiu-jitsu, I think that will make a make a big difference. And, and also on the striking, I feel like um, just the size, just the size of Hamza. But it is exciting to see him against an ex-champ, one of the pound for pound greats, a former pound for pound number one. It's gonna be very exciting to see how he performs because if he goes out there, picks him up and subs him like he did to Kevin Holland, you can't deny the guy, you know, you cannot deny him a title shot of 185. And fair play to Usman for taking it 10 days, you know, as an ex-champ, one of the greats, you know, a lot of people sitting in his position don't need to take that risk and wouldn't take that risk, so it's kind of all or nothing for him. He goes out there and gets a win. I don't know, does he get a title shot against Sean Strickland or is he uh, back in contention at well? I don't know. I don't know what the UFC plan, but it's very exciting. I still kind of lean towards uh, Hamzat Shemaev in that fight, but it's going to be a good test. Also, a big change up in the main event is um, Makachev versus Alexander Volkanovsky, too. The first fight was very good. The first fight, I, I've watched it a few times and I, I know. I, I, the first time I watched it, I thought Volkanovski won. The second time I watched it, it was closer than I thought the first time. I got a lot of flack for thinking he won. It, you know, it was maybe partly because I expect, I, I thought he would do good, but I didn't think he would win. So then when he did better than I thought he would do, maybe I thought like, oh wait, actually he did way better and maybe I gave him more credit than, he still did very good and uh, better than anyone has and given a tougher test at Islam than anyone else has. I don't think he's going to come in on 11 days notice and uh, do better than he did last time with a full camp, full preparation. But again, he mentioned before uh, in the first fight he felt something like the strength wasn't what he was expecting and all this stuff, whatever. And again, Islam has been prepping for Charles Oliveira, a completely different style than Volkanovski, a complete different body type. You know, uh, Oliveira stands up tall. He's uh, kind of like Muay Thai striking. He's going to throw knees and like jump in knees. And he's going to pull guard and throw up subs and stuff off his back. Volkanovski is like the complete opposite stance. He's five foot six, switched his stance very well, in and out, non stop moving. His resting scrambles are fantastic. His um, get ups were great in the last fight. He did a fantastic job of like nullifying the submissions and the back control. Yeah, I don't know. If he comes in fresh. Like he said, he's been drinking beers, he's off the couch, he's been having a little holiday, but he's been so active, so busy, uh, like he's non-stop fighting, non-stop, he's the most active champion I can think of. Maybe a little break and like a foot off the gas will actually help him. Maybe that'll help him come in fresh and a new look and feel better, so it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting, it's going to be an interesting fight. You know, a lot of people are obviously saying he's coming in with the excuses, like, oh, if he loses, he's like, oh, he took it with short notice, whatever, but... I don't know, I, I respect him a lot, like Volkanovski is an absolute machine, he's a, a huge inspiration. Like, like what he said, like taking these big risks and these step ups and stuff, it, it, it makes you a better man, like it makes you learn from yourself and like, you know, challenges are what make you better and being in your safe zone and comfort zone and all that stuff, nothing great happens there, right? So if you, if you want greatness and good stuff, you have to go out of your way and get uncomfortable. Also, I'm sure he's making a lot of fucking money for the fight. <laughs> so I don't blame him in that sense. I'm going mainly based on it being short notice. I'm gonna edge towards Islam Makachev. I felt like Volkanovski did amazing in the first fight. I think with a full camp, I would edge towards Volkanovski just because small adjustments in that first fight, and I think he would have done a lot better. Uh, Islam kind of he had some great moments in that fight. Obviously, he won the fight. He just uh, he doesn't. There's nothing more I feel like he could have done in that fight. You know, like nothing different. Like with his style, you know, he wrestled, he got his takedowns and some of the takedowns got stuffed. He scored his own striking and he dropped Volk to a knee at some point. But yeah, I just I just feel like Volkanovski, it seemed like it clicked in that fight that, oh, he had his number, sort of like he figured him out. But I think with a full count, he would need a full count to to go out there and, and do the business. But it's, it's fucking exciting. So we'll see what happens. You will see 294 Abu Dhabi, some big changes. Also, it's spooky season, Halloween. And some spooky news, Yasada is not going to be in the UFC anymore. I've seen a lot of weird statements from fighters and stuff like that, like some strange shit. Hopefully it's good news and they bring in like, I don't know, like WADA start looking over things and the World Anti-Doping Agency. And Yasada was definitely flawed, like, I think everyone that was signed, is signed up to Yasada has had issues and... But, 
you definitely, when they came in, you saw the landscape of the sport change, you know. I know a lot of people would say someone like Michael Bisbee would have never been champion without, like, Yasada on board, you know. That's a good thing, right? He, he should, because he's a workhorse and sacrificed so much to become a champion. With those cheaters in place, when you look through his record and, like, the guys he lost to, blatant cheaters, like, people that we know, v Vitor, literally, like, Vitor. Just like that, I, I think, I think it's a, a good thing that landscape changed. Literally, Within a couple of years or a year or so of Yasada being there, like all the champions shifted, and it's a, it is a scary time, it's a spooky thing. Then, also, if it isn't, then like, is it going to encourage other guys like that don't believe in their, their, I don't know, their genetics, their skill set, whatever? Are they going to be encouraged to now, like, oh fuck, like everyone's taking some shit, like I need to take some shit too, which is a scary time. So, hopefully, there isn't going to be like the Wild West and like Pride days again, because I saw some people talking about health and all this shit. I don't know if anyone ever watched Smashing Machine and stuff, but I don't think it was the healthiest time for UFC fighters, or no, sorry, Pride fighters, or MMA fighters, or anything. People start banging some ridiculous stuff in their in their ass, and it comes with a lot more than just physical benefits. I think people are having some mental health side effects and taking more trauma, and I feel like the fights are already pretty fucking exciting without steroids and it being a fair playing field. You know, there's still a lot of cheating bastards out there still, so people say it with me because I make jokes about my dad being on steroids. He's juiced off his fucking head, but he, he's a 50 year old man that is an ex strong man. He's not competing in a professional sport. He could do whatever he wants. Also, if you want the gains of Pacer, buy yourself a Pacer's gym t-shirt and you will get anabolic, untestable performance benefits, but you have to be wearing the t-shirt. Not owning the t-shirt, wearing the t-shirt. Talking to t-shirts, spooky season, spooky news, the almighty Halloween limited edition shirt, the pumpkin spice shirt is available. The normal shirts, the beige and pink shirts are like 20 pound on the website. There's free shipping, there's fucking 10% off, all this crap. Ship free 23, gets free shipping. I think it's like AAA 10 gets you 10% off on your first order. You can't use two codes on one order, so pick your free shipping or your 10% off. Whatever works better. Um, that's my cat screaming. Please like, subscribe, call me a dickhead, whatever. Stay tuned. I'm going to keep trying to keep up to date with the videos, even when I pick things up. And usually that's what happens. I get busy and then I, I stop doing so many videos. But thanks for watching.